Yeah, this is the architecture of cognition as a generalization of adaptive problem solving in biological systems. A number of models of cognition have been presented at BICA 2021. This talk will explore how the combination of human-centric functional modeling and a group decision-making system called general collective intelligence can exponentially increase our collective capacity to understand and make use of each of your models and how that exponential increase in ability can be achieved. In human-centric functional modeling, living systems are modeled as having a set of human observable behaviors or functions. All the states accessible through these functions within a given domain of behavior form a functional state space which the system acting in that domain moves through. Any collection of such systems then moves through a collective functional state space. As an example, the cognitive system executes reasoning and understanding processes. And as it does so, it moves from one concept to another, thereby moving through a space of concepts or a conceptual space, which is the functional state space of the cognitive system. In conceptual space, the initial concept and final concept are nodes of a network of concepts that interact through the edge in the network, which represent reasoning processes. A direct interaction represents type 1 or intuitive reasoning. An indirect interaction represents type 2, that is rational methodical reasoning. Using this same approach, a collective cognition can be represented as navigating through a collective conceptual space in order to solve group problems. The usefulness of human-centric functional modeling is that it allows the functions and properties of cognition to be intuitively understood in a way that can be represented mathematically. In each functional domain, specific problems are defined as the lack of a path from a specific initial point in functional state space to a specific target point in that space. Solutions are defined as paths which accomplish that navigation. The complexity of a solution is the distance it occupies in conceptual space multiplied by the linear density of the conceptual space the solution moves through. General problem solving ability in any adaptive domain is defined as the ability to potentially navigate a path from any initial point to any target point in general. And the magnitude of that general problem solving ability is the volume of that functional state space that can be navigated per unit time multiplied by the density of that space the, that the system has to move through. In the case of cognition, this is the density of the conceptual space the cognition has to move through. In conceptual space, generalization of a concept involves defining a larger concept that includes a larger region of conceptual space around that concept. Specification of a concept involves defining a smaller concept within that concept. When the ability to generalize increases to include the entire conceptual space, the, concept, the cognitive system can be shown to go through a phase change in which the size and density of the conceptual space as well as the general problem solving ability of the cognitive system, that is the intelligence, can rise exponentially. In any adaptive domain, there are two ways that problems can be solved. In conceptual space, one is through type one, that is fast or intuitive reasoning, which is represented as recalling patterns of solutions observed in the paths, that is recalling pa paths which solve the required problem of navigation. This is done when solutions can't be computed, that is, are, are non-computable. Another is through type two, that is slow or rational methodical reasoning, which is represented as using known path segments to compute the unknown path. That is using those path segments to compute the solution to a problem of navigation when solutions are computable. Every reasoning process executed by any model of cognition can then potentially be represented as a path through conceptual space. By decoupling your model into a set of reasoning processes, 
Those processes can be added to a library that can be used to increase general problem solving ability. We can then define a single measure of fitness by which all such processes might be compared. This can enable your model to be reused in an exponentially greater number of instances where it is most fit in achieving an outcome. To define this fitness space, consider that any system with a stable set of repeatable functions also must stay within a bounded region of a fitness space that describes the fitness of the system to execute its functions. A change in fitness of the system occurs as a result of some action, that is, as a result of navigating through some path through functional state space. We can define the most general possible fitness space that applies to all systems in terms of the target value of fitness, the actual value of fitness, and the predicted value of fitness. The path through fitness space must then stay within a bounded region during this navigation. In this sense, the motion in fitness space must be stable globally throughout the fitness space, despite potentially being chaotic in functional state space due to random interactions with the environment. All the processes of life, beginning with homeostasis and ending with consciousness and cognition, can potentially be modeled as dynamically stable adaptive processes within their respective functional state spaces and fitness spaces in the same way. Because all processes modeled this way might have dynamics that are confined to a bounded region in these same three dimensions of fitness space, the same mathematical equations describing motion that is globally stable in three dimensions might potentially be used to describe processes in all these different adaptive domains. In summary, human-centric functional modeling represents cognition in terms of a set of reasoning processes that can be navigated, which I'll call the external functions of cognition, and a set of functions required to select those processes in a way that navigates the conceptual space with general problem-solving ability, which I'll call the internal functions of cognition. This approach attempts to solve all the problems of cognition by simply reusing the solutions the larger community is currently developing. Using general collective intelligence to coordinate our efforts, it may be possible to exponentially increase our capacity to converge on the single understanding of cognition that is most fit at solving the problem. That's it, thank you. Thank you for your brief presentation. Questions? So Andy, I think we'll have more discussions about this offline, but one of the things that I see there is, maybe, maybe it's unintended, is a tacit assumption that the conceptual space is relatively static. If that's a, if that's a complex adaptive system of, of constant creation and dissolution of concepts and graphs connecting them, how do how do you measure density and sparsity over time, for instance, when you're when you're doing, you know, defining the getting to the solution space? Uh, no, it's not a static. It's not a static space. Mm -hmm. uh, part of those navigation functions, I didn't get into the specifics, but they do allow creation of that space. In fact, the motion of concepts through conceptual space, uh, or or considering how how concepts might move through conceptual space is absolutely fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, so th th there's, there's a lot left out, but the point is uh, trying to come up with some, you might say meta model that simply is focused on the biology of, of cognition without, uh, without assuming any implementation, without assuming, without assuming anything, just simply modeling what uh, we observe condition, cognition to do and uh, so that any model that someone creates can potentially be fit into that. So we could potentially make use of it, maximize our ability to make use of it. There are countless, as you said yourself, uh, efforts, have been, efforts have been going on for so long without uh, converging. They clearly can't, uh, no one is smart enough 
to be able to understand more than one or two models and to be able to compare the different terminology and so forth in order to reliably uh, select the best components of each. Uh, as you said, we need a better system. I just want to say one thing. Uh, this came from uh, my work solving social problems in Africa. Uh, I realized that our systems for decision-making are profoundly broken. And how do we recognize, how do we reliably recognize what's broken and fix it? Uh, that's what led me to this model. The things that this model identifies are the things that are needed, are, are the things that, that reliably fix problems. And I've shown this through case studies where I've demonstrated the ability to exponentially increase impact on real, to exponentially increase uh, real social impact uh, and that taking that as a uh, as as some sort of proof of exponential increase in general problem solving ability, I've shown the ability uh, or the potential to exponentially increase real social impact in a number of different areas, from agricultural livelihoods to access to healthcare or uh, or education. So there is real meat on these bones, so to speak. Any other questions? No? Thank you very much. And then we shall proceed with the next talk by Phil Jackson. Okay, let's see. I've got to...